Why today it sounds for he is a bonus by so back and again with all of and you have may have seen this product before on my channel but to be clear um this is outdated reviews basically it's a new series where I review out of date products which has been seven as well throughout the years of its release. So you may recall the 12th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver TV remote by the one company. Um, has now stopped producing these and has been stopped for a few months now. Um, unlike the tenths, this is battery operated, not chargeable, so we'll point it out. Um, it is very similar to the 11th Sonic Screwdriver Universe remote. I'm just going to go get it now. Um, it is a very very improved model of the original Sonic as the original Sonic was designed for the Matt Smith era where the earlier props had the button on the bottom like so this is one of the few existing ones that still work um, I've got a second hand so yeah, there's no batteries in it at the minute, so it's used for that one. That's for a comparison. So, unfortunately, I still do not have the 10th Doctor Universe remote. That is the one I'd really love to get my hands on, but it's very impossible for me. So I'm stuck with the other two. So looking at the box, the 12th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver Universe Remote Control, it says extending. An installation of the sonic screwdriver in extended position and on the front and um, again tells you what it is extending to talk to sonic screwdriver remotely tardis on the side there bbc doctor who on the bottom gives off some sort of information legal information about the one company and of course official licensed product by the bbc and of course it is recyclable if you wanted to get rid of it unlike me i love to keep products and um, so showing off what you can control so you can use it and um, so you can pretty much control anything that has a remote or infrared and um, also gesture based as well and um, also with button press and then of course you can use it as a toy as well which I use it for really and of course if I want to turn off TVs without having to program it then that's what I can do I use it for the TARDIS sometimes BBC Doctor Who on the side, and again on the other side is the exact same but slightly different design. Um, on this side, on the back, extended Doctor Who Sonic Screwdriver, fully functioning, programmable, universal remote control. Uh, it tells us about the flickability, um, the extending um, flick open, and then of course it tells you about the grip. The grip is some sort of a different material to the, the, the original one. So, as opening it, you'll notice there's like the one company Hero Pro Hero products built for play, display, and control. But I use it for display and play. Um, opening up gets the Sonic screwdriver in extended position, where you see the top half and you see the bottom half. And then of course you see Mr. Capaldi with his scary eyebrows looking at you. So I'll just take a quick look at that real quick. Um, this was stuck in my wall, so I had to take it down to show you. Um, so it gives off a blueprint of the 12th Doctor Sonic, and of course see some sort of formula of how it's made. And of course it shows you what it does. Now on the on side you do have um, Dyslexia Friendly, which is good enough for me. Um, instructions, which took me a while to read on the first video that I did of this, because Back in 2018 when I first got this product, um, I got it for 60 quid if I remember rightly, where the original price was about 100 or something, I can't remember. But um, I was quite struggling. This is one of the reasons why I'm redoing the video, but on a later date with all my knowledge on YouTube and stuff, so it's not boring. So this is more of a superior video of that. So it gives off information of how to display a screwdriver, how to use a lock feature, how to clean it, how to care for it. And of course battery information which is dis displayed down there. And then of course you uh, gives you off information. Um, 
And I like the fact that they've used both sides of the paper so you can actually have one side as a poster, like the 10th Doctors and of course the 11th Doctors, because that's what the intention is. And of course, the fact that it can go straight to it for a manual. So, treated inside, you'll see a sta plastic stand and of course a Sonic itself. So, to take out the stand, you just do that. And it's just a clear plastic stand, which is nothing special. Um, if I was to translate this, it'll probably be a Sonic stand or something daft like that, because um, in it it will it, it does say something in Galafrain, but I don't know what unless it just says Sonic screwdriver and yeah, um, and then of course you'll uh, get to the fun part, which is the Sonic screwdriver, which is very difficult to get to at times, and I have never stopped using this. It's one of my all-time fav favorite Sonics. Now, it was the 10th Doctor Sonic I was very in love with, but ever since I grew to watching the Capaldi era and Matt Smith era with this, using the screwdriver, I have very well loved the screwdriver and it has never left my sight. And as you can tell, the bottom down there is starting to erode away because of my hands, especially on the ring as well. It's um, very noticeable on this one, as it does go back to the original colour, which is strike strange. So it's a bit different. There is slight like, odds and the advantage about um, the batteries are that they're not chargeable. And all right, it can cost a lot of money just to get a couple of triple A's in there. But and again, unlike the tenth doctors, the battery does tend to wear out after a while um, through charging it. So. That's what I like about these types, because you can just unscrew the collar. Now, I will say these haven't got the original screws in, because the original screws have rounded off, and I took the other screws out of all gadgetry that I took apart. And these are just fit, they're just pressed in, really. They, they do come out, as you can tell. So I just put that down. I can't really take that one out, but you twist and pull. I've got a dual screwdriver I can use. If I can get any, there we go. I'll use that one. Oh, this may take a while. However, I did find a screw from a different thing and I had to put it into that one and it seems to do it a lot better than these. But. I need a magnet to actually do this. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, see if this screwdriver's got its magnetability on it still. And it doesn't. Right, I'm gonna go get a magnet. Sorry about this. And then of course you just twist and pull. And then of course you can just thing it out. And two triple O batteries. It's pretty neat. Um I will say that if you have put a lock code on your screwdriver and you tend to have lost it and you've forgotten the lock code for it, um if you take about the screwdriver and then take out the batteries for a second, then put the batteries back in, and put everything back together, it will just automatically will let you go straight to your Sonic, as it will erase the lock code, but it will it will not erase the, um, the, the programming, which is pretty neat, and I like that as, say, if you've lost your screwdriver, um, lock feature, because you don't know the password for it, then you can just straight up remove the batteries and then put them back in, which is what I like about the screwdriver. Now, 
Now, in effects mode, you can turn it off still, just by doing this. Enter lock code. As soon as you turn it back on. FX mode. That's how I use it, which I like. So, um, I will say that it does have like other features as well. It's got a secret sound on it. Uh, not secret sound. It's, it, it did accidentally do the test mode, but I don't know how to access it. But I know I managed to get the test mode on this one because it did the test mode. That one didn't. It did once, but I don't know how to redo it. But if you press it a few times, you have like a torch. Press it, um, press it seven times. Press it eight times. Does moss code. And of course when you're not using a screwdriver. Enter code. The screwdriver will nicely sit there. And that's all space saving as well like the 10th Doctor's screwdriver stand was. But this time it's just a plastic holder holding the screwdriver. You can hold it like this or this or like that. But I use it as like that. Um, it does say in the manual you put it up like that to stop the sharks from eating the screwdriver. <laughs> it does actually say it in the manual if you read it. Um, overall, what do I think to the product? It's pretty cool. Um, does it offer as much features as it does now? It does. Um, I won't show it's operating the TV because I don't have a TV because my TV is smashed as you'll know on the Instagram page again please go follow me it will be in I'll, I'll put my name in the description below also feel free to like and of course subscribe there is a Doctor Who um, episode coming out soon on my channel and of course MDW Productions as well but I'm just waiting for a couple of things to be done and then edited and it's up on YouTube hope you guys enjoyed this um, I enjoyed reviewing this. Next time I will do a re-review of the 11th screwdriver. But of course without the box. Because I don't have the box but I get everything else. Um, also if you like the series of uh, outdated reviews. Then also leave a like. And of course comment outdated reviews. If you want me to carry on with the series. I think it's going to be a brilliant series. So Alonzi Alonso. Bring it down. I use this quite frequently and I cannot put it down the fact that you can just flick it but the one nitpick I do have is I didn't know I didn't tell you straight out but if you hold it upside down and give it a slight shake it does come out um, it's a, and it's also um, noticeable on my friends as well because my friend has one as well so he has said that if you put super glue down the claws there on the behind section and then you just leave it like that and then of course after it's cured you can just you know close it and it'll stay shut unless you want to really flick it and that's what I might do at some point um, as for cleaning it um, I have tried cleaning it but um, I'm just gonna let it just do its thing so turn its features um, well let's do destruction first so we've got the claws which are using the material of um what was it die cast metal with like copper parts and you can see like the strut sections have also got these like raised um sections there to resemble the rivets for the original prop and of course these little lines across as well unlike the first one it doesn't have the line which is straight strange well, right, unlike this one, it didn't, that one didn't, yeah, but anyways. And of course, the button is now presently on the, the handle. It's quite dusty. <laughs> um, but the fact it's soft rubber, unlike the first one. This first one I quite like because it's proper hard rubber. This one's like really soft and I prefer this type of material. Um, but even on the back shows off the stitching effect of the Sonic. Um, you can see like the ring section, especially down here, it's starting to wear, you can tell it's after use. And if you, if I zoom in, if I can, you can notice some black specks, flecks in them. 
And that's what I like about it, to give it that age effect on the Sonic device. Like, it's being handled, like, pretty much all the time. And that's what I like about it. Because on the first one, it was just pretty much straight up white. And it's very harsh to look at. Where this one's got more of a yellow to it, as you can tell. Um, another thing about this is the bottom panel section is slightly skinnier to the original, as you can tell. Because that one has housed the button. This one hasn't been modded in any way. It's still the original. It just needs to be having batteries in it to obviously work. But this time the button's on the handle, which means you can actually use it like that and do your thing. And as extended, you can see all them nice little swirls in there, which resembles the on-screen well very well. Now it is quite weird to see like plastic against metal construction, which is slightly weird, but I'm actually getting used to it. Um, now I will point out that some of the Sonics out there are slightly more shiny than this one. Um, I don't know why or how, but I think they'll just polish it. But even out of the box, brand new, they tend to just be like proper shiny, shiny metal construction. You can notice these little screws on the sides. Um, after a while of flicking the Sonic, which I'm going to be fixing so shortly when I've got some super glue, I was going to dab it inside the emitter because this will, the emitter crystal will start to go up and you, it'll start to move as you probably can tell there. But yeah. Um, the cage section does wiggle side to side, including on the, there with them. that's to give way for the mechanics of the flickability. And that's a word that Propsmith has said. And, speak, and the claws, however, are slightly misshapened. Um, I don't know why it's like that, but I think it's just to give room for like the springs inside. And they are hollow, as you can tell, you can tell like the moulding process and stuff, which is pretty cool. And of course, um, another thing about the Sonic is it's also a TV remote. Practice mode. And as you can tell, it comes with practice mode as soon as you turn it on. I will say it does it does not come with batteries installed. You have to install them yourself, which I'll get to in a minute. So you've got your gestures. Down, up, right, left, right. Hang on. Man's a bit defective. Push, go. Right, right. See, it's tap on the left, tap on the right, tap on the top, up, tap on the bottom. And then if you flick right. it, then you can tell. Double press. Control mode. Memo. It is meant to be controlling the lights, but it doesn't really do it properly. And then, of course, you've got effects mode, which is my favourite mode, and it's the only mode I ever actually use, because it's, it's Sonic. So, the one thing I like about the screwdriver is it's not all gesture based. Um, to activate the lights and sounds for the effects feature, unlike the original, um, you actually press the button, and I quite like it. Whereas this one is just straight up gesture based in the effects mode as well, and it's kind of annoying, that's why I don't use this one. If it wasn't gesture based, I would start using that one. Now, the question that some people ask me is, if you switch the bottom sections, does it still work? The 